Greetings, I'm Shad coming at you from Atilan Organics here in Sununa, Lake Atilan, Guatemala. Today we're going to be kicking off the second video in our three-part video series of how to raise broilers from chick to fried chicken. In this video, we're going to see the two-week-old baby chicks move up to the farm where they'll get settled into their new house and area in the food forest. Throughout this video, we're going to see a bunch of different strategies that you can use to keep your broilers healthy and comfortable. Sanitation and encouraging free range are two really important factors in getting these birds to produce healthy meat. By encouraging them to go out and range for bugs and green material, it ensures that the meat is extra nutritious while also helping the food forest and our environment to flourish with the help of our chickens. When the chickens that are two weeks old arrive up to the farm, just like they were at a day old, it's easiest just to turn the box upside down and dump them all out and let them get situated. It's important that you have water and feed ready and waiting for them inside their clean house when they arrive. So once they get up to their new house, the first thing is a really important little trick. You have to teach the chicks their new house. If you were to let them go outside on the first day, in the afternoon they would naturally start to go as close as they can to their old house, which is down at the bamboo. We don't want that. We want them to learn their new house. So the trick is for the first three nights after the chicks leave the brooder house and arrive in their new house, you should keep them closed up all day and all night. So for three days and nights, the chicks should not go outside. While this seems maybe a little difficult, we want our chicks to go outside, we really want them to learn their new home. Once that happens, every afternoon when they're free ranging, at a certain time around 4 p.m., they will go back on their own to their house. And that's really useful for us. Inside the house, during the first three days, they have the bamboo feeders and they have their normal waterers, the same waterers that we use in the broody house. After three days, we begin to open up the doors. Now here I want to comment briefly on the design of all of our animal houses. Chicken houses, pig houses, goat houses, doesn't matter what it is. If you're going to let your chickens go outside, you want your houses to have at least two doors and two different yards that the chickens can go into. So as you'll see in the house behind me, there's two doors. One door opens up to the area that I'm standing in right now, and the other door opens up to a separate divided area behind me. Why is this important? Because as the chickens go out on the land, they scratch, they eat the plants and bugs that they like, and they poop. All of these things can be helpful to the land, but only for so long. If you leave the chickens on the same land for several months or up to a year or longer, the land will begin to get sick. The plants that the chickens like won't grow anymore, and there will be very little organic matter left in the ground due to their scratching and pooping. So once one batch of birds does some disturbance on this land, the next batch will go to the other spot and allow this land to regenerate, to use the fertility and to regrow the plants and bugs that the chickens like. So again, every chicken house that allows chickens to go outside should have two doors and two separate yards. Because in the brooder house, the baby chicks had access to feed 24 hours a day, it would be stressful to change that schedule right after their big move. So during the first week, we allow the chicks to still have access to feed all throughout the day and into the evening. But after one week, we transition them to a new feeding schedule. This is important because it encourages the birds to eat less concentrated food and range more for bugs and fresh green material, which makes the meat better tasting and healthier. So what we do is we actually withhold the feed from the chickens until 10 a.m. every morning. At seven, we arrive and we give them fresh water and we open the door to the yard that they're currently ranging in. Because there's no concentrated food, the chicks are forced to go and look for other forms of food and nourishment. Around 10 a.m., we add our feed to the chicks who then come and run to eat all their food. 
we time it so that the chicks clean up all their food in about two hours. If you come back and it's finished before that, it means they need a little more food. After two hours, the feeders are empty and they generally will start to range again, encouraging them to spread their manure around the food forest and eat bugs and plants. We repeat the process at 2 p.m. where we fill their feeders again with hopes that the feeders are empty by four. They then return to their house around 5 p.m. where we lock them in safe from predators and repeat the same process the next day. This schedule of feeding them at 10 a.m and 2 p.m. is really good because it encourages them to spread their manure further out away from the house. In addition to that strategy, we use movable feeders. Because the feed attracts the chickens in a larger quantity, they tend to concentrate their manure and their disturbance, their scratching, where the feeders are located. If you keep the feeder in the same spot very quickly the chickens will really disturb and start to hurt that piece of land. So conversely, by moving the feeders, we can guide the nutrients that the chickens give to different areas where we want. So as you can see, it's 10 a.m. and I've just placed the chick feeder along with fresh feed here in a new area of our food forest. The chicks are quite hungry because even though they've been out grazing all morning, eating bugs and greens, they also need some energy, which is the chick feed that I'm feeding them right here. To my left is an avocado tree that's two years old. To my right is a tree tomato and a local fruit tree called a hokote. Behind me, there's a bunch of loud pigs. I want to fertilize these trees. So by placing the feeder here, I allow the chickens to concentrate their nutrients around the roots of these trees. In the short term, this offers a boost of fertility for the fruit trees. And by moving the feeder after a couple days, it allows the fruit trees to utilize the nutrients and grow fresh again. In addition to the feeding schedule of 10 and 2, there are several other chores that are important for the daily upkeep of your chickens. Every morning at 7 or 7.30 when you arrive, you open the door to let them out and you change their water for fresh water and you put it in a new spot. This is the type of water we prefer to use because it's movable. In our big hen house we have automatic waterers but they're harder to move. So this we can set outside and place wherever. If it gets dirty, all you have to do is empty it out, clean around the bottom with your thumb, and then when you turn it back over, it should be pretty clean, and there's a good amount of water in there. When you set it down, as you see, we use something like a stone or a piece of wood that's a flat surface raised above the bedding, and you set the water on there. It's very important that the water is balanced or level and not tilted to one side. If it tilts to one side, all the water will go out. So when you set it down, check to make sure it's level and that there's a fair amount of water around the whole lip for them to drink. Then you go into their house and you want to add some dry carbon material in order to cover the manure that was left by them over the night. By balancing the chicken manure with the dry carbon material, you're in essence building a compost pile right under your chickens. Every several months, you can dig out all this material and by digging it out, it gets aerated and it actually becomes a perfectly balanced hot compost pile. In several months, it's ready to put on your garden. As you can see around the, the water, it gets pretty caked. So we'll have to add a little more straw where, where the water is. We'll add some fresh straw. In addition to balancing the chicken poop with carbon inside the house, you also have to look at the areas right outside your house. Because our houses are stationary, meaning they don't move, the areas right outside the entrance get a lot of chicken action. The areas right outside get a lot more scratching and extra poop than the areas farther away. 
So while you're encouraging them to go farther, it may be important to add some carbon material to the areas right outside your house that have already been quite disturbed. If you don't add carbon, the poop around the house will build up. It will allow parasite cycles to carry on and eventually make your chickens sick. So if you still want to keep your chickens in a yard and send them further out, it may be necessary to add some carbon to balance the manure buildup right around the chicken house. So that about wraps up the second video in our three-part video series, How to Raise Broilers from Chicks to Fried Chicken. In the next video, we will see the final stages of the chicken where they grow quite large. We're gonna see the effects of the chickens on our food forest, and then we're actually gonna harvest the chicken, uh, prepare something delicious, and also talk a bit about the ethics of eating meat, and how and if sustainable meat production can exist, and what benefits it might offer to ecological farming and regenerative agriculture. If you've enjoyed this video, you had fun or you learned something, as always, subscribe to our Mildly Famous YouTube channel and don't forget to pee outside.